are surging nationwide, 46 states now with confirmed Omicron cases. The variant sparking long lines and testing shortages just days before Americans gather for the holidays. Let's bring in Dr. Mark Siegel. Dr. Siegel, great to see you. We don't want to deliver bad news, right? There's a way, there's a way we can all handle this. But certainly if you're going to the airport, it's going to be, it's going to be probably like you've never seen it before. We've got huge reports of crowds. And then if you have to get tested, it's, it's, it's becoming very challenging in many parts of the country. So how should people handle the holidays and stay safe? What is your advice to folks? You know, Sandra, good afternoon. The thing that first hits me is the fear quotient on all of this. I've mm. written books on fear, and I think everyone is panicked. I think it's sweeping across the country, and that doesn't necessarily fit the facts. Actually, sweeping across the country is probably part of the reason everyone's afraid. You hear these terms, right? The terms that it's, it's spreading like wildfire. All of that makes people afraid. And then you're told, wash your hands, wear a mask, open a window. Well, we've been hearing that for two years. So what are the tools against the fear? Here are the tools that the Biden administration is not, not using yet, and I hope they will. Tool number one is that if you're boosted, if you're vaccinated and boosted, the chances are growing greater by the scientific day that you're not going to get anything other than a mild case here. That's pretty good news. Secondly, we got a pill sitting there at the FDA's doorstep that hasn't been approved yet, the Pfizer pill, that it looks like it decreases your risk of hospitalization in a great study in the New England Journal of Medicine by 90 percent. That's got to be approved. That's got to be bought in quantity by the government. That's got to be sent out there. And I have been saying for weeks now, I'd like a rapid test in every house in America. Yeah. Michael Minna, Michael Minna told me, uh, who was at Harvard, said, look, if the, if the rapid test isn't in your house, Sandra, you actually have to go out somewhere to get tested. Right. You could be spreading COVID. Not to mention, they're hard to book. Uh, you don't have to, you could talk to your friend, your neighbor, whoever it is who has to go get a test because they had some contact with somebody who tested positive. And it, it will eat up an entire work day helping your kid get a test or if you have to get yourself a test. Um, so to your point, if testing was more plentiful, perhaps that could help as well. Dr. Fauci, um, as usual, is weighing in with his advice on holiday gatherings and said this. Do not do things like go to gatherings where there are people who you do not know what their vaccination status is. Vaccinated or unvaccinated, under certain circumstances, masks work. So it's not an either or. You can do both and should do both. So, uh, so take that in and, and tell us your thoughts on it, because... I, there's a suggestion that if you're going to gather, that you should ask vaccination status, even if this is in your own home or another family members, um, so you can know whether or not you should put a mask on if somebody in that room is not vaccinated. Where do you stand on all this? You know, I think it's too narrow what Dr. Fauci said. I've been having this conversation every day now with multiple patients with the holiday season coming up, and it needs to include things like, has somebody been tested before they travel? What's their vaccination status? OK, but how about if they got over COVID? That counts in my mind for at least one vaccine shot. How recently did they get over COVID? All of this goes into the conversation. Who's at risk here and how large is the gathering? Because we want people to have their gatherings. Otherwise, we're going to have another issue, which is more depression, more anxiety and more worry. We have to take into account that we have to be safe. And I think people have the personal responsibility here. I've seen it and I'm encountering it every day with my patients. Okay. Uh, so let me just ask you one final question with about five seconds left here. So if you're at home right now and you're watching this conversation and you're boosted and maybe you're flying to go see your kids and grandkids uh, for a gathering gathering at their home, but you're flying to get there, do you, do you keep your trip? Do you get on the plane? I say yes. Planes are pretty safe. They got HEPA filters. Watch out for the airports. That's where you really want to be careful and wear your mask most. Planes are pretty safe. Please go see your kids this year. It's terrible if you don't. Yes, go. And is, is Moderna booster more efficient than the Pfizer? Sorry, really a quick last second. They're both great. And the Moderna came out with stuff today that shows that you get Saw that. 87 times yeah. amount, the amount with a third shot, if it's a full shot. Really yeah. both working great. Saw that as well. Thank you for letting us pick your brain on that, Dr. Siegel, as usual. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, Mike, I just day. feel like people have a million questions that are sitting Absolutely. at home. And there, there is nervousness. This obviously is spreading faster, Omicron. You're seeing all these cases pop up. Even members of Congress, uh, an unusual amount now reporting positive cases, although mild symptoms.
Now, so. it's great to get his take because those are questions everybody's asking as they're looking forward to getting together with family and friends over the holidays. But if you're about to get your booster, he did point out that that Moderna just came out with their own study that their vaccine is highly effective against the Omicron variant. So something to take in mind if you're heading out to get your booster.